Capturing student attention and providing access to learning at a student's optimal independent level is key to time on task and ultimate student success. Whether in groups or during independent work time, you can quickly and easily personalize teacher and student learning environments based on interests, independence, accommodations, and modifications for success. You'll notice on the screen, I have a student that is logged in. They can see their courses on the left, their assignments in the middle. They have current assignments, late assignments, and even revisions for interactive lessons. Another student might have something that is set for their interests and interactions and engagement styles. It's important to note that there's lots of things that can be modified to make sure students are engaged, active, and independent when teaching. And that is the focus of our session today. Today, we're gonna to take a look at this main dropdown for students. We're gonna to select Tommy, and we're gonna take a look at Tommy's settings tab. This applies for all students. We're gonna cover three different areas that you can modify settings for individual students, for your group as a whole, even your teacher settings for when you're doing group instruction. Let's take a look at this top section here. This is where you're gonna find the main student information. Often where you're gonna to come to reset usernames and passwords. So if a student transitions in or you have a new student added to your classroom, all of these pieces are right at your fingertips. If you are a Clever user, as a reminder, you'll have to check in with your Clever admin because they're using a different portal to pull in that information. As you scroll down, you'll see play mode. Play mode is important for independence. Our default is self-select. Here, students are able to view and play activities that you've assigned. It's recommended for students who can navigate a little bit more independently. We also have an autoplay feature. This is recommended for students that need a little bit more support. Uh, maybe our students in younger grades or students that have difficulty with that independence moving from task to task or activity to activity. It just moves them through fluidly and independently. Underneath that, you'll see interaction options. Here we have red X prompts. We have the ability to turn those on and off, depending on what your student's level of support is. We have the ability to exit an activity. If you're finding that a student keeps leaving the program and you want to lock them in, you can go ahead and turn this off. Under matching type, this is an important one. This has to do with any question answer features in Vizzle. The drag and drop is our default. So if you think about an iPad or a mouse, the student clicks on the answer and drops it to the question card, giving them a celebration or a reinforcement. You can also change it to one click. This is one of my favorite features. It actually slows the student down. It reads the text to them and makes sure that they see all of the answer choices before they click and make a selection. One click, one tap with a finger or a mouse, and it's answering those questions as needed. Our two click is great with our switch accessibility, two steps. So kind of think about it as a space bar and an enter key. We're working through a process to make sure that they're answering those questions and using different modalities. I'm going to go ahead and leave this at our drag and drop for now. Underneath, we have accessibility options. It's always important to read through a student's IEP if they have one, thinking about that most current documentation for required accommodations. Here you can toggle text-to-speech on or off. There's a toggle for switch and keyboard accessibility, JAWS or screen reader. You can change the text-to-speech features for rate, pitch, and volume. Thinking about a student that might have a hearing impairment, you can mop all of these features so that they're working as independently as possible. Change the student voice. Again, this is how the information reads back to that student who's playing them back. And change the highlight of the text. You can even click the play sample if you'd like to really work through and see how things sound. You'll also find a toggle for the display accessibility widget. And turn that on off as needed. Here you're gonna see those different themes. This is what the background looks like when the student logs in. Remember, they each have their own unique username and password. This is where those interests come into play. So, Thinking about Tommy, he loves dragons or camping. Maybe I have older students in a classroom and I want to work more like a work system. You can choose a solid color background. You're choosing based on the age and interest and engagement that's needed for the students in the classroom. So for Tommy, I'm going to go ahead and click on dark green, one of his favorite colors for now. Underneath that, you're gonna find celebrations and reinforcers. This is what happens within the program when the student is answering questions and finishing activities. Celebrations are what happen at the end of a lesson. So we have a simple style here that is just giving them a little activity complete. There is a drop down. We do have our interactive options. You can turn those on and off. You can click on the preview button to take a look and see what they're gonna 
feel like and look like. You can turn the sound effects on or off and even change those seasonal filters based on the time of year. For now, I'm going to go ahead and just toggle this to simple. Our next set is reinforcers. Reinforcers the celebrations that happen after a student answers the question. It keeps them engaged and motivated. You can turn them all off, you can turn them all on, or you can customize it based on that student's interest level. So knowing what I know about Tommy, I can come in and select some things that I know that he might be interested in. Simply click on the little button in the corner. What's great is you can always click on the little plus button if you want to see little play button, and it's going to give you a review of that animation there. So whoop. again, just a great way to kind of preview it and see if it's something your students might be interested in. Go ahead and turn on some or all. You'll find some more simple reinforcers at the bottom of the list here. So reminding you to think about age and engagement. What does this look like when the student logs in? Well, thinking about all of the details that we've just set up here, we're going to run through. I'm going to log Tommy in so you can see what this looks like. At the top of the screen, I'm going to go ahead. The students are logging in exactly where the teacher does. Student enters their username and password or clicks to log in with Clever and it's gonna drop them on the screen. What you'll see here is in the background, I've got that green background. I have lessons that have been assigned per subject area on the left-hand side. So Tommy can indiv independently come in and navigate to whatever classroom or section he's working on. This is a great way to set up independent work across the board. What is it that they're working on? Is it a targeted goal? Super simple. You'll also see current assignments. These are the things that are in his folder for this week, it even gives him a due date. There is a section for late assignments, so things that he hasn't finished but can go back and practice. And there's a revisions tab for custom student responses if we're creating a feedback loop. So know that there's different options here. Tommy can also come in and click the settings wheel at the top of his screen now, and he can make changes. Simply click on the theme. He's decided he wants the dragon theme. He can click on the reinforcers. Maybe he's decided that he wants to go ahead and turn all the little reinforcers off or 